Hi, I'm Tiffany. Today, I'm going to show you how to subtract with zeros. Subtracting with zeros. When subtracting with zeros, there's two things you want to keep in mind. You want to line up the numbers by place value, then subtract. But you also want to remember to regroup when you need to. Here's example number one. Let's start by rewriting our problem and remember to stack the numbers on top of each other considering place value. So we have 50. We're going to subtract 23. I need to regroup here because if I have 0, I cannot take 3 away from me. I have to figure out something to do. I can cross out that 0, turn it into a 10. This 1 did not come out of thin air. I regrouped it. I got it from over here where the 5 is. The 5 turns into a 4. The 1 that we took off is over here now. Now we can subtract 3 from 10. If I have 10 and I take 3 away, I get 7. If I have 4 and I take 2 away, I get 2. My answer to example number 1 is 27. Let's move on to example number 2. Example number 2. 60 minus 50. Again, we need to rewrite. Thankfully, these problems are not that difficult. When stacking these numbers on top because they both have the same number of digits in them. I don't have anything complicated to figure out when lining my numbers up. I have a two digit number which is 60 and another two digit number which is 50. All I have to do is line them directly on top of each other. Now if I have zero and I take zero away from it, how many do I have? Still have zero. So that's easy. If I have six and I take five away from it, how many do I have? one. So my answer to example number two is ten. Here's example number three. With this example we have two zeros. So let's rewrite the problem considering place value to make sure we have them in the right positions. Nine hundred and I'm going to subtract thirty-six. From the beginning I'm going to show you a trick. Whenever we have multiple zeros, sometimes this can be confusing to people. You cross out one and it becomes a 10, but another one becomes a 9, or how do you know what it's supposed to become? Here's the trick. The last zero of the number always becomes a 10, okay? The zeros next to it always become a 9. This is how you solve this. Yes, you have to go all the way over to this 9 to regroup. We will get that to that point. Here we go. But to simplify things for you, just know the very first 0 is always a 10. Any zeros to the left of that are going to be 9. And you have to continue to the very first place digit that has an actual value. In this case, it's a 9. And you make it one less. And you make it an 8. We're going to do another example like this to make sure you understand. We could have walked it out each step of the way and say, this becomes a 10 and then you borrow. But it becomes tedious to do that, in my opinion. So this will work every time. 10 minus 6 is 4. Now let's subtract this column. 9 minus 3 is 6. 8. There's nothing below our 8, so that's like 8 minus 0, and that's 8. So the answer to example number 3 is 864. Let's move on to example number 4. Example number 4. I have 30 minus 17. They've helped us out. Our numbers are already stacked on top of each other, so all I need to do is make sure I get my regrouping and subtraction correct. I cannot take 7 from 0, so I need to regroup here. I'm going to cross out my 0 and make it a 10. I didn't get this 1 out of thin air. I had to borrow it, so I get that from my 3. Cross out my 3, and it turns into a 2. 
10 minus 7 is 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. In this case, we only had one zero, so our regrouping was pretty simple. Let's move on to example number five. Example number five. For this example, we have two zeros. So let's see if we remember what I explained just a few slides ago. If I have zero, I cannot take four away from it. So I need to cross out my zero and turn it into 10. Then my next zero becomes a nine. And my first number that is a value that I can borrow from or regroup with is seven. So it becomes one less and that will be a six. So now I can subtract like normal. If I have 10 and I take four away, I get six. If I have nine and I take two away, I get seven. If I have 6 and I have nothing beneath it, that means 6 minus 0, which is 6. So the answer to example number 5 is 676. Let's move on to example number 6. Example number 6. I start out with 0. I cannot take 2 from it. So I must cross out my 0 and turn it into a 10. I need to figure out where I got my one from. So I borrow from here and this became a zero. Now I can subtract. I have 10 and I'm gonna take two away from it. What do I get? Eight. If I have zero and I, can I take four away from it? No, I can't. So what I need to do is regroup again. My eight turns into a seven, my one, comes over here with the 10. So now I'm subtracting 10 from 4. What's 10 minus 4? 6. And here I'm subtracting 7 minus 3. What's 7 minus 3? And that's 4. So for example number 6, we end with 468. Let's move on to example number 7. Okay, I wanted to finish with an example that had several zeros just to make sure you remember the trick that I showed you and that is the very first zero turns into a 10 so let's work this out if I have zero I cannot take six from it so I need to cross out my zero turn it into a 10 every zero in between becomes a nine First one's a nine, second one's a nine, and the third one after is a nine. The five is the first number that you can actually borrow from, so you do, you borrow one and it becomes a four. Now we can subtract. I have a ten, and I take six away from it, and I get four. If I have nine, I take seven away from it, and I get two. If I have nine, and I take four away from it, I get five. If I have 9 and I have nothing to take away from it, I just keep a 9. And 4 and I take nothing away from it, I have a 4. Don't forget to put your comma in because you're dealing with a number that goes into the thousands. So your answer for example number 7 is 49,524. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to click like, then head over to supereasymath.com for more math tutorials, printable video notes, worksheets, and more.